Hey everybody, in this session, we will cover renaming folders and moving folders. This will be quite different from what we've done for moving files because it's slightly more complicated. I'll explain why it's slightly more complicated. So when we rename a folder, for example, we need to also rename everything underneath it. So for example, let's just say currently there's a file called Corgi folder, which resides in folder A. Similarly, there is a folder also residing in folder A called folder B. Suppose we rename folder A to maybe folder C, for example, the parent path of folder B needs to change from home slash folder A to home slash folder C. This also applies to the Corgi photo from home folder A to home folder C. And if there are more nested um, folders and files, that also needs to be updated when we rename a folder. This same logic applies when we move folders around. Everything underneath it must be also updated. So let's get started on this. So the first thing we're going to do here is for this rename component that's being used for file and folders, we need to firstly understand, is this renaming a file or is this renaming a folder? So how do we achieve that? So firstly, what we're going to do here is um, let's do a background query of document reference and the file type we need is the file ref. Now for this edit button here, instead of back updating the file title automatically, we need to, let's copy this and delete the existing action, conditional value. So let's add a condition. If what we are editing is a file, a type of file, so equal to file, paste the existing action. If what we're editing is a file, we're simply going to update the file title. If what we are editing is a folder, that's what we build next. Because we need to subsequently change a lot of these parent path in the nested folders and files of the folder renaming, I'm more keen to use a cloud function that will help us. So let's create a cloud function. So let's create a new cloud function called rename folder. And the parameters we need are the old parent path. We need a parameter of new parent path. We need the old folder name and new folder name. And let's quickly add the boilerplate code in. So here, the cloud function that I've written is it accepts these four arguments that we defined. What it firstly does is it looks through and searches for the folder we are renaming based on its parent path and file title being the old folder name. And what it does next is it renames this folder. So for example, if we are renaming folder, um, if we're renaming folder A, the file title will now become folder C if we rename it folder C. And what it subsequently does next is that it will look through all the files looking for where the parent path contains the old old parent path. Um, so home uh, slash folder A and anything that, that starts with it, but it can end with anything else. So continuously end. Um, so this can, takes into account nested folders and nested files. And then we update, we replace it. Uh, we replace, for example, we look through, identifies this Corgi folder is in home of old name folder A and changes it to home slash folder C. So let's configure this. So I'm calling, so when it is a folder, let's call the cloud action of rename folder. The old parent path we're feeding in is the files parent path. The old folder name is basically the title, the file title. Here, the new folder name, we're gonna be simply calling it the widget state new name. And then output, let's just quickly delete this. Conditional action here. Similarly, let's also add, um, let's dismiss the dialog and paste. Now that's done, let's test this to see if it works. Here with folder A, and within folder A, there's actually a file called cookie photo and a folder called folder B. 
let's rename this folder A to maybe to folder A updated capitalize. Seems to be working. So you updated the folder itself and within the underneath the files and the folders, the parent path has also been updated. So you can see here, Corgi photo, parent path is now home slash folder A updated, which means that this allows us to access the photo and folder B within this folder. Now, next what we want to do is move folders. So this is slightly different. What we need to do here is when we are moving folders, we only allow folders to be moved at higher hierarchy of the parent path. It cannot be moved lower. If you move folder A to the folder underneath folder A updated, it will create a circular problem. If you try this on Mac or window, it doesn't allow you at all. So when you, so the option to move folder is between folders. So folder A can go to folder B or folder B can go back to home. So a higher level structure. We will never allow folder B to go to, to move to lower level folders because that's simply not how a computer works. It will, it will create a circular problem. And you can definitely test, as I said, you can test this on Macs and Windows. On window, it just simply creates a shortcut. On Mac, it doesn't even allow you to move the folder at all. So similarly to what we've done um, for moving files, we need to um, obtain the same data required for moving folders. So the first thing we're gonna do is do a background query um, of files here. So document from reference, files, um, file ref, and here, what we will need to also obtain is the list of folders available. Um, within our whole database. So similarly, we're gonna to go to add a query, back and query, um, with a query collection, files, um, list of documents, and we're gonna do is deleted is, maybe type first, type equals to, um, delete this folder, and then let's go is deleted is equal to false. That means um, we haven't removed the file to be to be accessible. So similarly, we need to create a custom function um, for available path to move folder. So I'm gonna change this name. What we need to do here is a list of string as an output. What we need is parent path. It's gonna be a list of string. Um, current folder name. It's gonna be a list of string as well. And then we're gonna go current parent path. So that's gonna be the parent path of the current folder. And then next we're gonna get the file title. So it will be uh, of type string as well. So here's the custom code for moving a folder. So similarly to the file, we're combining all the combination of parent path and folder name and adding the home root directory. Next we'll remove the current folder as the user cannot be moving a folder to itself. And lastly, we will move all outputs containing the current folder and everything underneath it. This is because as discussed, we do not allow moving a folder within another folder that is its child. Okay, let's configure this in our Flutterflow um, dropdown. So let's go back to the dropdown and the options. Let's scroll down to custom function, um, available path to move folder. So the first input we need is a parent path, the list of parent path. So this can be obtained by files document, map list item, get property document, parent path, confirm, confirm. This is the um, list of folder names. So similarly, let's grab that folder name from file title, confirm, confirm. Now the current parent path is the references parent path. So we can get it from the files document of this one parent path and the file title is also obtained here um, from the file title, confirm. Okay, great. Let's test this to see if the front end is showing the correct folders that we can move a folder to. Now that it has loaded, let's see where um, the dropdown option available to move folder A updated. Click move and we can see here it can go to folder B, um, which is part of the root, folder C, which is part of home, and then there's a folder X within folder B, which is part of the home root. What you cannot see is this folder. 
um, folder A updated, well, folder B within folder A updated. This is because we, as I mentioned, we, are, we cannot move a folder to its children folders. Next, we have to configure the move folder action. Similarly, we are going to create a cloud function that updates um, all the path nested within, in addition to updating the folder itself. So let's go to um, cloud function. And what we need for the cloud function is, let's quickly call this um, move folder. We will need to have a few arguments. So parameters that we need to pass. So let's pass an old parent path. Um, the old parent path is going to be type string, not nullable. Um, new parent path. So this is where it's going. Type string. We're going to pass in the folder name as well. And this is going to be of type string as well. So let's quickly add this boilerplate code. So I've already written the cloud function code, but we'll quickly walk through what it is. So firstly, well, it's very similar to the rename folder one. However, for move folder, what we need to do is firstly look for the folder we are moving and then update the parent path to the new parent path. And subsequently, we also look for all the nested folders and files and update their parent path as well based on the new parent path slash um, folder name, i.e. the current folder we are uh, moving. And then we're just updating parent path here. So let's test this to see if it works. So before we test it, let's quickly config the action here. So the action we need is a move folder action. And then we don't need to delete this. Old parent path. So old parent path is um, this one. The new parent path is gonna be the dropdown, a widget dropdown. And then the folder name, it's gonna be our file title. And then let's also, I'll dismiss this custom dialog when it has been moved. Cool, let's quickly refresh this to test it out. Now that it's loaded, let's test to see if we can move folder A and all its subsequent nested files and folders within folder B. So let's move the file to home slash folder B, move file. So it seems like folder A has been moved away from home to folder B. So we double click folder B, great. Folder A updated is in folder B. Now let's see if we can access the files within. Perfect, we can see folder B, which is what, which was inside folder A updated, is there, and the Corgi photo is also there. So we can also see in Firebase, the backend information has been updated correctly. Lovely. Let's quickly config the remaining actions. I believe there was a, um, in the action, there was the delete action. So what we can do here right now is remember how instead of actually deleting, we will update, um, the back end to not show it anymore. So IE delete it is true, meaning it's deleted and delete it at time. So let's quickly config this action. So when we click delete it, let's just go add action, update document. And the document we'll update is the file ref. And then the field we'll update is, is deleted, is true. And then is deleted at, we will set uh, maybe the current time, easy. And then let's dismiss this. Let's also config the download button here. So for download, this only applies to files. So let's hide it when it's um, a folder. So let's go conditional. Um, we only wanna show it if the files document type equals to file. And then let's do the download. Instead of download, um, let's go to, I think it's open URL, launch URL. And the URL we wanna launch is the file document download URL. Let's test these uh, delete function and the download function for file quickly. You can see here the download functionality is not available. Um, let's delete folder C, which has nothing in it. Let's go press delete, done. Now folder C is no longer showing. Let's go to folder B and then folder A updated and download download that um, Corgi photo. Boom, see here Corgi photo is shown. Lovely, this seems to be working. So I'm gonna conclude it here. In this session, we covered how to rename a folder and also move folders and subsequent 
nested folders and files within that moved folder. In the next series, we will cover the navigation up top here, where a user can click a sub click exact file path and they will navigate directly to it. Remember to subscribe to keep updated on the series. In addition, remember to comment, like, or subscribe if you enjoy my content on Flow to Flow.